pretty early, when I stayed at Salt Spring Island in 1942, they had a subscription to Saturday Evening Post. And I just got fascinated with these illustrators, the, you know, and the whole idea of illustration. I thought, you know, wow, I want to do that, you know. So that was a pretty early idea that there was this thing in the world called illustration of people that doing images for publications and for books and, you know, and that it, it was interesting work. Norman Rockwell, I mean, I loved the emotionalism of what he was doing, you know. I, I, I was a sucker for the stories that he was telling, you know, and, and how beautiful they were. And the, the idea that he was looking at real people and that so that the paintings were always reflecting a real person. I, I think Rockwell really embedded the idea of being an illustrator, even though, you know, my idea, my, my work was never that realistic or careful or, you know, uh, but, but still he was very influential in that he showed me what was possible. You could tell emotional stories and, and through your art and uh, I love that. Then when I went to art school, I discovered the German Expressionists, like Egon Schiele. They were all very, very influential to me. The directness of it, you know, that it was, you really felt the drawing hand. And I've always been attracted to that. You know, art that disguises the drawing hand is not very interesting to me, you know. I mean, some of it is beautiful, I have to say. But my own impulse is always for art that doesn't disguise how the artist got there. You know, you can see the hand moving, you can see the gesture being made, you know. I've always been recognized as a kind of literary illustrator, because I am. I'm, I'm a reader, I, I think about things in literary terms. Even at the height of the psychedelic kind of movement, when there was a lot of pressure on me to be bolder and more colorful, I, I still got work. So I kind of stuck to my guns and I used watercolor, you know. And, and I think that's one thing that helps an illustrator in their career is that you feel a consistent voice, even if it's not the most fashionable voice on the planet, you know. Uh, I, I've always been a little off-center in the field of illustration. Ironic, I say I don't do advertising, but of course <laughs> my posters are a form of advertising, but I think their usefulness to the theater, to Lincoln Center Theater, is that they don't look like advertising. My, my grandparents were Protestant missionaries that went out uh, to China in the 1860s. So my father was actually born on home leave. You worked for a certain stretch of time and then you got a year back home, you know, back in England. So he was born in one of their home leaves, but he was basically raised in in Chifu and spoke several dialects of Chinese, you know, loved the Chinese and loved the culture and loved, you know. So he wanted to be a musician and he went to uh, Canada to the University of British Columbia to study music. But while he was there, he met my mother who was a divorcee with two children. Anyway, he ended up working for the James McMullen Company and, and of course to to support us, and so by the time I was born, you know, it was a fairly good life and, and the company was doing very well. Jifu at that point was going through a pretty good economic period where everyone was doing pretty well. Of course, once the Japanese came in 1937, it started to slow down and we hung on, and just like uh, some of the Jewish families in Europe that couldn't believe that you know, this solid life that they had created uh, could really be decimated by this other force. So we left it pretty late, but other members of our family left it even later and they became prisoners of war. 
But we got out on the second to last, what they call re repatriation boat out of China. We went from Shanghai to San Francisco and then from San Francisco to Canada and various places in Canada during the war. And then uh, my father arranged for us to leave on a boat to go to India to, he would join us in India and then my mother would, would go with him to, to China because at that point he was the military attaché at the uh, British Embassy. Then, you know, uh, I went to the boarding school in Darjeeling, which was its own adventure. And then my father got killed at the end of the war. Obviously, that was really hard on my, my mother because she'd had all of these anxious months where he was out of contact, working behind the lines with the Chinese troops and, it, you know, not knowing if he was dead or alive. And then we, uh, we lived for a year in Shanghai. Then we got on a ship and returned to uh, Canada. That's basically the events and the places that the book covers. Uh, that I was, I had just turned 11 by the time all of that ended. So it's basically the first 10 and a half years of my life, you know. And there's stories that sort of rocketed around my head throughout my life. You know, I, I realized that they were the touchstones of a lot of my anxieties, you know, and what made my personality the way it is, which is basically the personality of somebody that stands to the side <laughs> and, uh, and, and watches uh, rather than someone that, that uh, plunges in, as it were. The good news about that is that I, I think that the basis of the fact that, of why I love drawing so much is that it's the sort of natural outcome of watching, you know, and of thinking about people and of being basically a voyeur. And why I waited so long to do the book, I, I, I can't, exactly explain, but th there just came a moment uh, in my 70s when I wanted to do it. Once I sort of broke the ice for myself in starting to think about the stories and write them down and started to do sketching, I thought, oh my God, this is so rich for the process of painting, you know, of of finding images and I it, it suddenly came flooding out you know and even the style that I chose which is really a little bit unlike any any style I've ever used I would say it was a gusher I mean I couldn't wait to get back to the drawing table and do more of those paintings right well I, I did think about it, you know, this kind of Olympian view of like backing off and being at, on a kind of medium height little hill looking down at things. My early reactions to Chinese art, uh, the, uh, those scrolls in which they're big landscapes, right? And you're looking at mountains, you're looking at rivers, you, uh, you know, there's a huge expanse and usually the figures will be like a little fisherman in a boat or people on a pavilion drinking tea or, you know, so there's this idea or reality that you can say a lot with small figures within a, a big composition, you know, which is sort of against the whole Western idea that you have to be very close in order to say, you know, say stuff. And the color became extremely important, that I wanted some color that I was using through, throughout, which was not a naturalistic color. In other words, that put it into the realm of memory or of, not surrealism exactly, but, you know, that purple became a color of distancing. But once I had that idea, 
a purple, then I could, you know, wangle it one way or another. You know? There's something in the reality of the art that is just not possible to reproduce. You know? You know, and the texture of the paper, and, you know, paper is so important to me, and the materials are so important, you know, I mean, all of the stuff that lands on the paper, uh, it just has a resonance that the printed thing can't have. I think, too, that the riskiness of my approach in painting is more palpable in the originals than in reproduction. People can see that I don't, you know, my procedure is not to do careful pencil drawings and trace things down. It's all like immediate in the moment, you know. I mean, there are lots of paintings that, for leaving China that I destroyed because they didn't work out. But nevertheless, that's, that's what it is. But anyway, leaving China was a great respite and a great year, more than a year. But to have that, that period of time where I was working on my own text, on my own, you know, soul, as it were, uh, it, was, it was amazing. I mean, it, it, it did show me that as much as I think I get my own opinions into my work, which I do, but it's a lot different than having a project like uh, Leaving China where I really am uh, saying what I mean and saying it in the way that I choose to say it.